Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life Podcast. I'm your host, Lori Palau, and we're back today with another Ask an Expert uh, question. And I'm really, really excited for this one because it's a question that comes from a fellow professional organizer and not just any fellow professional organizer, but someone that is like in the Philadelphia area. So someone super close geographically, although we have never met in person prior to this conversation, um, I was really excited when she reached out because the whole purpose of this series for anybody that's brand new and just joining us is, you know, for gosh, seven years now, I've been coming on interviewing people from all walks of life, um, authors, experts, um, doing solo episodes about a variety of topics under the sun. And we were having a conversation with our team and we were saying, we really want you guys to be part of this conversation. We think it's so important to have you guys have a hand in the topics that we're talking about. And so we opened up this Ask an Expert series where you can come in and pretty much ask me anything about business, about organizing, about the Enneagram, whatever it is, work-life balance, ADHD, you name it. And we've got multiple ways for you to connect with us. Um, If you just head on over to our website, if you're like, oh, I think I want to do this, um, there's a contact form. You can even leave us like a voice memo with your question so many different ways. And if you don't want to be on the show yourself, you can ask your question anonymously and we'll answer it on your behalf. So you don't even have to, if you're camera shy, you don't even have to be on it. The whole point is to just get you guys included and involved in the conversation. And so today I'm joined by Tink Rainbow, who is a, like I said, fellow organizer. She runs a company called Clean House and she's in the Philadelphia area. She's a huge team of people. And, but she's got a question for me about my business and about the, sh- about specifically podcasting. So I'm going to bring her out. Tink, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so wow, excited. Seven years. Yeah, it feels it on some hand, it feels like I've been doing it for like two, maybe. I get it. And on the <laughs> other hand, it feels like I've been doing it forever. Like yeah. I can't remember a time before mm-hmm. I did it. It's kind of it's kind of both. It's like raising kids. Like yeah, I get it's, it. It's, it's, it's I get it. <laughs> um, but we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about you. So give everybody just like a kind of high level overview of who you are. I am Tink Rainbow. Yes, that is my name. I am owner and founder of Clean House. We service Philadelphia mainline areas. And if you've seen any of the TV shows where they do room renovations in a day, we do that for real. It's really fun. It's awesome that I get to do this with my team. And I love learning from other people who have been in the business. So thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah. And people that are probably watching and listening are like, oh my gosh, I need her in my life because that whole like HGTV, like, oh my God, please come in here and wave a magic wand like a, fa- like a fairy godmother. And we right. all know that there's a lot of work and it takes a lot of hands to make that possible. But sure um, does. I, I think that's amazing. So you reach out to me and I love this question because it's, again, it's not directly correlated to organizing in the traditional sense, but it does play a role. So why don't you go ahead and just ask your question that you said, and we'll have a conversation about that. Sure. So as an organizer, there's so many things that you can do with your business. And I've always been intrigued with the idea of starting a podcast. I have no idea how to begin or how it starts. Tell me how you got involved and how you switched to doing this from, you know, managing a team. Like okay. why and how? Okay. This is this is going to be a little anticlimactic for people and I've had I've kind of answered this question 
in in other ways in other settings but never i think truly on the air so this will be this will be fun so i t- the truth of the matter is i stepped into this by happenstance i had never set out to start a podcast i started my podcast in 2017 so we started to record at the end of 2016 and i can tell you the exact conversation I was on a TV show, like on a morning show Mm -hmm. um, up in Allentown, Pennsylvania for anybody that's, I was on a, a, you know, I was on, I was doing like a holiday organizing thing. Right. And after we got done recording, uh, my friend Eve, she was uh, my friend Eve Russo said to me, you know, I think you should start a podcast. And I will tell you my hand to God, I never listened to podcasts at that time in 2016. I knew what they were, but it wasn't anything that I really listened to. And I said, I wouldn't know the first thing about starting a podcast. And she said, I have a podcast, a a friend who produces podcasts. I think you should have a conversation with him. So I set out to have this just informational conversation. And essentially what I learned in a nutshell, I had been blogging for years because I started my business in 2009 and that was the height of blogging. So I had a ton of content that was out there. So in addition to my clients and servicing my business with boots on the ground, I was also creating content through my blog. And so essentially through this discovery call, it you know came out that I could really just start by repurposing a lot of this content that I had in written form in a different modality in audio form. At that point, we weren't video, we were just audio. And my biggest concern was the technology. And I said, I don't have any idea how to edit a show or any of the technology side. And I'm not a technophobic person, but I said, I have no idea. And the thought, and this is a really important thing, I think, for just people in general, is I knew my bandwidth of at that time. My kids were in the throes. I had teenagers at the time. I had a 14 and a 16 year old. And I said, I don't have time to like learn and incorporate this whole other skill set, this whole other job, which is podcast production into what I want to do. And so I made the decision very early on if I was going to do this, I was going to outsource that whole part of the business. So we talk a lot in life and in organizing and in business, both at home and in, you know, professional world about what are you going to do yourself and what are you going to delegate? What are you going to outsource? What is a good use of your time? What is a good use of your expertise? What is a good use of your resources? And so from the get-go, that was always factored into the equation is that I had to have a financial line item to be able to support that. And that was going to be part of it. So for somebody else out there that might be thinking of starting and wants to do that, just factor in that in order to produce a show, you have to, not, it's not just the show. It's not just the guests. It's all the other things. And I was very um, adamant about wanting to produce a quality show. I think anytime, and especially in the organizing space, we are sort of perfectionist by nature. And so the thought of putting out something subpar and asking somebody to give me their time and attention and have it not be quality, like I wasn't going to do it. So that was another, you know, so I had to like look at all of these different factors. And I said, I'm just going to test the waters. Like I, what do I have to lose? I'm, I'm an Enneagram eight, if you know what that is. So I'm a little bit of a risk taker. I'm not afraid to like make a mistake or try something. And I figured I gave myself basically from a business perspective, I gave myself a small runway budget for podcast production. And I said, I'm going to invest in this. Like I would invest in my business in, in other areas I had the content already because I knew I was going to, what I could teach on. So that part was easy. And he, my podcast producer, Steve at the time, um, was, was great. He literally held my hand and he had a podcast studio. This is back in the day. This is like before zoom people, like, again, I'm dating myself and I would go to his studio and I would batch record once a month and I would, he had everything. He had all the equipment. I didn't have anything. Literally, I started it 
because I would go to him and I would record. I would just come with my content. Over time, that's evolved and changed. But that was really the impetus for how I started the show. And I was going to give it, um, you know, and he walked me through everything from like, what are, what are show notes? What do you, you know, I need cover art. I need a intro. I need an outro. I didn't know what any of that was. So there was this whole runway, like this learning curve. And I was fortunate that I had Steve who had produced other shows to really mentor me through that and teach me what I didn't know. So my advice well, first of all, let me stop there before I give any advice. How's that? Does that like kind of paint a picture? It's great. For you? It sounds like everyone needs a Steve. <laughs> exactly. In many ways. Yeah. I, I have a, a tangent on that. Yeah. Please. What would you tell an organizer who has all these ideas and wants to do everything at once? How did you know that this is, I mean, I, I, I hear your story and I appreciate no, it. And no. I think that's how a lot of people get into this business. It just sure. happens and they know they're supposed to do it. But there's so many things we can do. We can have a product line. We can have a podcast. We can have a team. How do you determine what is your niche and how to follow that? Oh my gosh, this is such a this is such a great question. And I wish there were like one specific like linear answer for for me to be able to give to people, to you and to our listeners out there. Um there's a couple of things, a couple of different questions I think you can ask yourself. Um, a lot of it has, and, and I'm also speaking from true experience people, because as somebody I who's been that. here for 15 years and tried things and abandoned things and, tr- and things I didn't think would work actually worked and like all the things we oftentimes have this picture in our mind of what we think it's going to look like, right? Like, so we want to be, we want to be doing the room reveal or we want to be doing this. And the reality is the behind the scenes is like the nitty gritty that people don't see, right? We don't think about that. And I get this a lot, especially when it comes to like digital products. Cause I do, I mentor other professional organizers as my business pivoted. That was one of the things that just organically grew. And a lot of times people are like, I would love a passive income. So I'm going to use this as an example, just because it's, I think it ties into your question. So one of the biggest questions I get from people is how do I grow like a passive income stream? Because again, in professional organizing, first of all, for anybody that's not a professional organizer, it is a very physical job. It takes its toll on your body. It is not all glitz and glam. You are, you know, you are running up and down stairs. You are schlepping bins. You are, you know, in crawl spaces, sweeping up garages. Like it's, it is not for the faint of heart. And so say that again. Yeah. And so it does over time take its toll on you physically. The other thing is you have, you know, in order for your business to grow and thrive, you need to be on site. You need to grow a team. Like it's a very hands on business. And so a lot of times people are like, how can I make money when I sleep? Because you're obviously there's only so many hours in a day that you could be on site with a client. I mean, that's just the reality. Right. So a lot of times people will look to find alternative revenue streams, which I think is great. I'm a big fan of diversification. And I preached it way before the pandemic and the pandemic showed everybody, especially in our industry, as well as other industries that were dependent on client interface, that things can change on a dime. Hopefully that would never happen again. And so having other revenue streams, I think is really important. But what happens is we oftentimes get hung up in the ideology of it and not what the day-to-day looks like. And so for somebody, and again, I'm going back to because I've been through this myself with, with when it comes to digital courses, for example, which is something that people can buy, rinse and repeat or product rinse and repeat. And I've never gone down the product line, so I can't speak to that, but you have to be, uh, you have to be super savvy in email marketing and SEO and uh, uh, technology workflow and all of these other skill sets and tools that are going to be using different parts of your brain, different resources. And for somebody that's selling a course, writing a course or creating a course is the easy part, right? Like that is the easy part. 
It's the execution. And I think this is for most, I think this translates for a lot of different entrepreneurship jobs. You know, if you're an interior designer, if you, uh, you know, if you're an artist, all the, so many different things, creating your work is what you do. So that is the, I'll say fun, and I'm going to air quote easy part, right? but it's the, it's the selling, the marketing, the execution, the workflow, the follow-up, all of that business stuff that is where people oftentimes get frustrated, struggle. And I think my advice there is you need to surround yourself with other experts who can do it. And and this goes true again, cycling back to why people hire professional organizers. We don't, we're not all good with the same skills. We're not all born with the same skills. We don't all have the same time availability to do the things you and your team are on site all day. You know, very few people I know have four, five, six hours to dedicate to being in one space. So to loop back to your original question, what's my advice? I think my advice is is twofold. What is your why? What is your why for wanting to do it? And there's no shame if you're like, hey, I just think it would be cool to be able to check off my box to have my name on a product line or write a book or whatever. Like, but I think you need to be honest about what your why is. And if you can think ahead to five years down the road, where do you want your business to be? And I can tell you for me, and this was a really, um, it's one of those things that in hindsight, like it didn't seem like a big pivotal moment, but it really was. I knew that I wanted to get into more speaking and thought leadership and writing and, and just being in the organizing space, but less of the hands-on. And I, I knew that that was what I wanted in my future. I knew I was good at hands-on and I knew that there was a, there's, and there still is a part of me that loves that one-on-one client work. But my five-year plan, this was going back a few years, was I would like to have my business pivoted over to a different area. So I was fortunate enough that I could afford to take that leap of faith because like a lot of things, it it's sometimes it's scary. It's risky. You're going to maybe take a dip because your time and resources are focused elsewhere. So time that you would spend either working with a client or uh, researching new clients or doing business development, that time is now going to be allocated towards meeting with manufacturers for a product line or researching um you know, or taking a learning how to create something else or whatever that is. So like in my case, I look at how my time, I'm a big time blocker and I look at the time I spend and so much of my time during the day is spent on or around the podcast. So I had to, from a business perspective, make sure that that made sense and I don't know if that, does that interrupt round? It does. I appreciate it. Yeah, very much. And what I really like about this is every organizer has a different personality and a different niche, something that they're good at. And finding that is the best advice you can give anyone and then following it, which is the tricky part. But I, I appreciate that. And I love hearing your story because I think we can all relate. Yeah. And, and, and again, I'm an open book and I tell people this all the time and specifically when it comes to the world of podcasting, because I get asked that a lot. Now I do a lot of speaking about how to start a podcast, especially for professional organizers. And I always, just like organizing, I think there's enough room in the sandbox for everybody to play. Right. I'm, I, I really do. And especially if anybody's going to be talking about ways that you can simplify and streamline your life. That is my goal. So it like, bring it on. What I tell people all the time is just think about what it is. What are your goals with it? Is this something that you want to do professionally? Is this something that you're like, Hey, I think it'd be fun to just come on and share. And that's okay too. If you want to just be a podcast hobbyist, that's fine. Do that. But no, Kinda, you don't have to necessarily, because I didn't know going in, again, the, the landscape of the industry was so different back then. But I think once you're in it, and again, you're looking at any of the initiatives that you're going to do, 
products, courses, books, anything that you're going to do is this is going to be taking time and resources. And how much of that do I want to give away to each of these different things? Just like you would if you were organizing and kind of decluttering and prioritizing things in your home. Right. Right. So um, I hope that gave everybody a little bit of an insight um, to where I am. It and sure just, does. And just to kind of kind of close the loop. So I tried this as a beta test and um, people really liked it. And we were Not very surprised. fortunate. Well, thank you. And we were fortunate that um, we started picking up traction pretty early on in our show. And what I loved about it was my initial, my intention with the show. And I think this is also an interesting thing where a roads take us. When I started the show, I, in my mind thought this is going to be a show that's going to be specifically for people who are looking for organizing strategies. And that was kind of who my, my client avatar would, right. That that's who I thought right. my listener would be, <laughs> would be primarily like and I'm not trying to stereotype, but, you know, busy moms who are looking for organizing tips. That's who I really thought I'd be talking to. And I am. But what I found very interesting was a lot of professional organizers or aspiring professional organizers reached out to me and were using uh, or coming and listening to my show and using this as a as a springboard for them to be able to feel confident to launch their own business. And I love that because that was never what my initial, like, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I never even in my wildest of dreams had thought that. And fast forward, that is how our SBO partner program was born. And for those of you who don't know, that's our community of professional organizers that are all over, which we grow a mentor. Um, we endorse them, you know, to on our show and uh, across all of our platforms and our mentoring, which we have a cohort starting in September for people that are looking to start their own professional organizing business and are passionate about organizing, but need some guidance on the business side of things. What are the, what are the nuts and bolts that I need to be able to take that leap? And so all of these different initiatives that we now do that I'm so passionate about were all born for me just trying this out. So if there's something that you want to, that you want to do in your business, give it a shot. And, um, that's all, that's what I got to say, people. I appreciate that so much and appreciate the fact that you support other organizers because not everyone has that and women supporting women and small businesses, the part in small businesses is what it's all about. So Thank you. Well, well, thank you. And thank you for what you do, Tank. And I'm sure that our paths will be crossing again. Um, and again, we'll be putting a link to Tank in our show notes. She's not that a link far to from Tank. me. A link to <laughs> Tank in our show notes. So make sure you check that out. And if you have a question for us or you have more questions about anything that we do, again, just hop into our show notes. There's a link. You can connect up with us. And um, I really appreciate you coming on. And I hope you guys feeling is very mutual inspiring and useful. And we'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, I'm Lori Plow. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.